and toward this boat from the back when it was slowly stopped at the at the port and we started shouting at people like are you from Myanmar and then they were so shocked because it's super dark as you could see it's dark and they they didn't know what to say first they were actually teasing me like uh, what are you doing here that kind of uh, because they they just thought that it, it was nothing but then we explained that we were journalists uh, from Myanmar and they were so shocked they never they had never seen any visitor like that in their life since they were they were taken there so st they started telling us uh, that they had no contact with their families that their families thought that they they were dead already uh, for many years and we saw all this uh, people loading fish, unloading fish from the fishing boats and Robin and I started uh, uh, recognizing the name of the fishing boats and the uh, and the ship's names. Then we sent it to Marta. Marta, do you want to explain that a little bit? Good job. Um, so, so Robin is texting these guys are in a cage, Martha. They're in a cage. And I'm like, you know, that's, that's really good. Part one, like we found people who are enslaved. But, you know, get the, get the images you need, but then quickly tell me the name of the boat and tell me the species of the fish that they're putting in the boat and tell me any identifying boat numbers and, you know, get wonky on me. And they, I mean, what they were finding was so compelling. One thing that Esther might not share is that these Burmese men were pretty shocked to have a... Um, Burmese woman and um, were very protective of her, also very interested in her, and she was having a lot of, drawing a lot of attention, let's just say. Um, is that fair? Yeah. Um, so so it, was, it was very challenging, and what I really wanted was the data. Um, and so when they told me it was Silver Sea Line, Bangkok, IMO, and they gave me the numbers, um, and then that boat left Benjino loaded with seafood. We used the marine traffic website. There's about five different websites which track boats. Every one of these large boats has an AIS satellite um, beacon that is tracking where it goes. And these websites, on these websites, you can see where the seafood or where any boat is going. And we've used this again and again since then. Now the boats are sometimes turning off their satellites, um, as some of you know. But there's also now three different very well-funded um, technology sites that are trying to use this data and other data to show where boats go to stop IUU fishing, which could impact human trafficking. Anyways, every day I would log in and follow the boat, and um, then I'd go to sleep and Margie and Jakarta would wake up and follow the boat because we wanted to meet it wherever it was. And so we tracked it and tracked it and tracked it um, as it came right on up into Samut Sakan. Um, when it landed there, there it was, Silver Sea Line. <laughs> Same fish, caught by slaves. Um, so this was a critical moment, right? So ca get this on film, get this on photo, and then um, we had rented a couple of trucks, um, dark shells, get in the back to follow it, um, see where it goes. So the drivers were not necessarily clear on the concept of the <laughs> being surreptitious, but also not losing the truck. And, um, but they did follow them into different companies, um, a number of different companies. And then we began looking at U.S. Customs bills of lading. There's a few different websites now, Pangeva, Import Genius, some others that will list every custom bill of lading. So from, we could put in the name of the company um, that that truck went into, and we could see where they ship fish to outside of Thailand. Um, we had gathered a list of names of American companies that they, they were shipping fish to from the various places where we had seen the trucks go in. And then I went to this um, Boston Seafood Show and told the National Fisheries Institute that I was there for a story about labor abuse and that I wanted to talk to the many companies who we had tracked the seafood to. They put out a blog with my photo to everybody at the conference saying, Martha Mendoza <laughs> is here to talk about, interview you about labor abuses. We've already spoken to her about this. And so it was unfriendly to say the least. I was followed through the whole conference, but it was a seafood convention. Our photographer and videographer asked for me to stay inside the press room so they could get their cutaways and their shots before I showed up. 
We were getting close to being ready to publish. We had men in a cage. We had meticulously tracked it to companies. We had given the companies an opportunity to respond, but we needed the Thai government and the Indonesian government to respond quickly because um, once we had contacted these companies, you know at that point in the investigation when you tell somebody, I have this information, and then they, they start scrambling to make it untrue in some way or to soften the blow. Yeah, it's so frustrating. So we quickly wanted to get Thai and Indonesia on video officials, and they were also there at the same conference. So even though we have reporters in Thailand and Indonesia, it was easier to get this um, Thai... Frozen Foods Association president at the seafood conference. He was there to discuss their good labor practices, and on video um, he said, you know, we've cleaned this whole thing up. This is not happening. And I said, it is still happening. Let me show you the pictures. And I had brought a little folder with the pictures of the men in the cage and how we tracked it, et cetera. And he said, it's still happening. We're, we're going to stop this. Um, here were some of the brands that we found on those customs bills of lading that we tracked it back to. So when our story went, we were able to name these common American brands or Stavis and Santa Monica Seafood. If you eat fish in the United States, you would know these names very well. So we named these brands. We were ready to go, but our lawyers wanted to know what the hell we were doing and how we were going to get sued once they saw all those brand names. Um, so we put together a very high-tech um, description of the island, the jail, here's a silver sea boat, <laughs> here it went to the port, here's the trucks going to the different places, including the fish market. The deal with supply chain is that if one tainted fish goes into a factory, everything in there from a legal perspective is seen as tainted as part of a product of um, human trafficking. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the lawyers kept saying, how can you say that every fish at Walmart has, you know, was caught by one of these guys on Benjina? And no, you can't say that. But you can say that it entered the supply chain and um, that made for a very tricky writing. This was not our final draft, but I'm, because you're journalists, I'll show you how we argued over every line. Um, Benjina, Indonesia, and then we said the Burmese slaves, and we said that because we wanted to show some distance from Indonesia, but we knew that an American reader would not know the difference at all. Um, the slaves sat on the floor and stared through. You saw in the photos, they're not sitting on the floor necessarily, and so did we want to say that or not? We argued about that a great deal. And stared through, well, were they standing there staring, or were they talking, etc.? through the rusty bars, an editor kept putting in the word metal, the rusty metal bars, and I kept saying, if they're rusty, they have to be metal, let's take that out, of their locked cage. Again, controversial among us, because why, w if it's the word locked, like, if it's not locked, it's, it seems to me understood that it's locked or else they would, it's a cage. And that word too, is it a jail, is it a cage? How do we explain that they're behind these bars? Hidden on a tiny tropical island thousands of miles from home. So if we're saying that, do we need to say Burmese? Just a few yards away, other workers, and this is something in writing about human trafficking you probably all know, but calling a slave a worker is potentially very offensive. They're, they're not wanting to be working necessarily, so that was a dicey word. Loaded cargo ships with slave, and now we have slave in two sentences in a row. I'm going crazy on that. Caught, slave caught seafood, and if there's an English major in here, you'll know that that probably should have a hyphen, that crowds, that word crowd was a Skype call error that we eventually cleared up. This is all like, you know, 40 hours of, of nonstop editing one sentence, I think. They were, we had said tainted, but the editors felt that the word tainted made people think the seafood would make them sick. So then we said, what about clouds? And they said clouds works, but they heard the word crowds. And there's actually a slightly different meaning between crowds, which means you're squeezing in like in an elevator, and clouds, which means you're kind of seeping into it. Clouds of supply networks, this was lawyer speak, right, to keep us from getting sued, of major supermarkets, restaurants, and even pet stores in the United States. Um, we did come to an agreement eventually. This was back when they said we could have three bylines on a story. By the end of the year, they were letting us have four, <laughs> so... You'll see we juggled bylines on these various stories. After the story broke, Indonesian officials immediately went to Benjina and to interview the men, and Robin accompanied them, and they began interviewing people one by one. 
And Robin said to them, you know, once you interview them, and the men being interviewed as well, said, you know, once we come talk to the police, we can't go back to the boats without getting beaten up or worse. And they said, not to worry, we're going to take you with us. And Robin said, you're taking them with you? And they said, yes. And she said, how many are you taking? And they said, we'll, we'll take all of them. <laughs> so she was like, okay. And so they put out a loudspeaker, and they said, anybody who wants to come talk to us or leave come now. And people began running out of buildings, out of small houses, off of boats. People were just grabbing small bags and dashing down to the docks where they were making the announcements. And as the reality sank in, it was this um, amazing time happening at Benjina where people were realizing they were not going to be enslaved anymore. Um, They gathered them up and said, how many of you want to leave? And everybody raised their hands. Um, we're trying to file stories on this as it's happening with horrible comms. Robin's calling, Margie and Jakarta, who's dealing with me, where it's like three in the morning. I mean, we were, we were just juggling to, to write this. It was also um, Jewish Passover, so it's this exodus moment in this day, and the rain is falling. It was just this amazing time. Um, more and more kept coming. They commandeered the Thai boats and put these men on them because they did, had no capacity and they didn't even want to leave them for a day. So they commandeered the same boats where they had been enslaved and took them to Ambon, um, which, where they had like a hurricane rescue center with some pads and some supply kits so that they could begin to get their names back, their IDs back. Meanwhile, I'm on the U.S. side of this saying... Okay, we just reported that all this slave-caught seafood is entering U.S. supply chains. U.S. has a law, an 85-year-old law, that says slave-caught or slave-produced goods cannot be imported into the United States. Why isn't this being enforced? And um, what they said is that there's a loophole in this law that said unless you can say that there's a consumptive demand in the United States... And the law came about in the 30s and 40s during the war, and the idea was that the U.S. needed rubber from from Southeast Asia to prepare for the war and fight the war. And they knew that this was safe produced, but they also knew they couldn't get the rubber. And so they wrote that if there's a consumptive demand, even if it's produced by a slave, it can be imported. And so on um, Capitol Hill, they immediately very quickly had hearings to close that loophole and change the law. And... um, by the beginning of this year, they began stopping loads of... U.S. Customs has been stopping loads. Particularly, they they went for the low-hanging fruit, which was Chinese labor um, camps, Chinese prison camps that openly export products to the United States. Um, And several of those have been stopped now. At um, At the Rescue Relief Center, we realized that these men were still somewhat nameless and we wanted to tell their stories more closely. Esther and Robin had been so moved by their stories so we brainstormed about how to do that as they were being photoed. Everybody had to get a photo, an ID number and a birth date. Um, I'll I'll hand it to Esther. We we, we saw an opportunity. Right, so what we did was uh, to kind of document individual uh, uh, slaves who had escaped from the Island. So we actually try to get as much information as possible from all these men before they leave. So uh, we ask our na- uh, their names, their age, and their uh, experiences, how they have been treated. So uh, this is kind of an, an interactive uh, that AP did uh, online that when uh, we have like some pages for this. And for example, this boy was only 17 years old, and then we would put the coat. Uh, the quote that he said, like, um, I was always beaten. And some of, some of these uh, guys were also saying, like, I was, uh, I was tortured a lot. I was beaten with a stingray, uh, tail, stingray fish tail. So it's actually quite poisonous, apparently. Um, some of these men are saying, like, I thought, that, I thought our, our stories were forgotten. And this guy said, we want people know about what happened to us in our life. So we did this interactive so that people can see how many of them and how, like a kind of a facial expression as well, like the feeling that they had uh, because they were still in a very shocking uh, experience uh, right after after this. And 
And then some of these men just came back to Myanmar batch by batch and uh and Robin and I would and I would go to the airport every every like every time they came back four in the morning, two in the morning to follow them again, like to make sure that we don't lose contact with them because there are still Uh, many people who we haven't interviewed um, but uh, we were looking for at that time we were lo looking for a character that we can uh, do a story of the return uh, return slaves but then Margie uh, when she was in Tour an island uh, where they were rescued to the second island called Tour and Margie found this person uh, who who was uh, about in his 40s and she she started talking to many guys to know uh, about what uh, about their stories and then she found one perfect person like a person who was trafficked when he was 14 and now he's in his late 40s so he ended his whole life in Indonesian island uh, he was on and off from the fishing boats He was tortured. He was he was almost killed. He was so close to being killed, and he escaped from the fishing boat. So, Ma Margie decided to follow this person. So we, when he returned back home, we actually followed to his village for uh, to do a reunion story. So this is his younger sister, who loved him very much when she was only 10 that her brother left her. Um, so that was a, a very heartbreaking reunion in his village. I would say like we were just standing there. We, we, we felt like we were part of this Hollywood movie. Like the whole village is crying because he came back. Uh, he was so shocked. His, uh, this is his mother. So when he left, his mother was young and beautiful and uh, recognizable. But now he was so shocked to see his mother and uh and this is the reunion they they had this like traditional thing they pulled some kind of liquid on his head so that the evil thing would go away from him so they welcome him like that and uh and he we interviewed him and and also like the reunion interviewing people when we were in his village actually there were a lot of this old ladies coming uh, to this house and started asking. He wasn't the only one who was trafficked. He went there with five others, which were our sons. So these these names we actually never found. So th there were stay a lot of um, missing people. I mean, we would say we don't know how how they ended up where because these were not on our list we tried to find as possible as possible uh, as possible as, like we tried hard but then uh, we started asking about one question to all these returned slaves like do you feel like all of your friends are here and this then people started coming up with this idea like no my friend is missing this name is missing that name is missing there are a lot of people who are still missing and they know the name of the fishing boats so um, when we were on that island the we we tried to um, note the the name of the fishing boat so mostly it's it would call Antasina Antasina is a uh, is, is an Indonesian name but then it has the number like 829 819 that kind of stuff so what we did was there was uh, one uh, local Thai organization in Thailand it's LPN the labor promotion network they were also working on this uh, helping the fishermen or labor issue in Thailand so we actually asked some of these names if they know anything so we matched the companies so the name of the fishing boats and the owner of the companies. So finally, uh, some of these fishermen were telling us, like, uh, actually, that boat didn't come back. This boat didn't come back because they were still in the sea out fishing. So then Mata took over to chase these missing boats. So I should mention that around this time, we were 800 slaves have been returned, a thousand slaves have been returned, 1,200 slaves have been returned. IOM was coordinating it with a whole bunch of NGOs, but every time we'd get a new update, we were just so 
buoyed, but also so frustrated knowing more men were out there. Um, we found the boat registrations, and a number of the men were talking about this one area called Dog's Leg um, near Papua New Guinea. And so I went to, I called NASA and the Defense Department and South Pack and a number of other people. I figured out who has satellite photos up there and asked them if they could get some satellite photos so we could identify the boats. This was also when the Rohingya were, um, oh, where was this? There was missing boats with like hundreds of people on them. So I was also asking, well, you're, can we get satellite imagery of this to find these boats? And there's a private company in Boulder, Colorado called Digital Globe that has launched this massive satellite camera. And they said, yeah, we'll help. But keep in mind, this is going to be like, and this is, I, I tell you this because my colleagues never let me put it in a story. They said it's going to be like finding a moving needle in a haystack, which I thought was a wonderful quote. Then they sent me this photo. <laughs> and I was like, oh. And this is like 500 square miles of the region. And they said, well, you know, start taking a look, zoom in on this, see what you can find, and we will as well. And then they said, we found your boats. And um, there they were, doing what's called transshipment. They're offloading seafood onto here. These were the boats that had been at Benjina that are now out there in Papua New Guinea. And we had to make a journalistic decision of whether we want to call the authorities or whether we want to report the story and how to do both at the very exact same time in many different time zones. We kind of did both at the same time. We notified the International Organization of Migration, Papua New Guinea, um, and Indonesia. And as soon as these... Oh, and we sent these photos to S, who could take them to... you know. Uh, so what we did was Mother sent me this photo. And these two guys who were showing, uh, uh, who were pointing at the picture were the two guys recently uh, the other guy when wh while the other guys were officially rescued by the uh, different governments like by organizations these two guys just pop out in Yangon in a capital city in the middle of nowhere like uh, from nowhere we, we didn't see them in, the, in any, any boats they actually uh, they were on the runaway boats uh, using the international waters entering Thailand, not at the port anymore. They went to one of these uh, really fancy um, beach resort, and they went all the way to b uh, border of uh, Myanmar, and then they entered back home. And we found them in Yangon, like, how, how come did you come back? We just came back with, uh, fr through international waters. We got some money from the people. They wanted to shut our mouth, so we we took money and come back. So they actually saw these boats uh, on uh, nearby Papua New Guinea. So we showed them this picture uh, if 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 they recognized the boat, and they said it's exactly what we were looking for. And uh, so we confer we confirmed about this. So then Ibu Susi from Indonesia flew drones um, and low-flying aircraft over and got better photos of them. And when those boats moved into international waters, they arrested the captains, and that prosecution continues, and they freed more men on those boats and returned them home. And here they are kind of realizing that their ordeal may be over. This is the beginning of the prosecution. This, didn't, this is about half of what we did, <laughs> but we did it again, and we did it again, and now that we have this methodology, um, we're doing it again. And, I, and I'd love to share some of those techni technical stuff with you if you wish, but I also want to hear, hear what they have to say as well. So, Thank you so much, Martha. It was really phenomenal. You know, now let's come to the Nepal. You know, this is the country which has been actually epicenter of human trafficking in the region. But I, I, as a journalist, uh, based in neighboring India, has hardly seen a hard-hitting story from this country. The reasons are really different for that. The capacity of the local newsrooms to spend money and devote resources for such a lengthy, time-consuming investigating reporting. But I'm glad to have with us a Nepali colleague, Surendra. He has done a major investigation about how number of people from this country are smuggled and taken to America through different international routes, how they have been abused, cheated along the way. So I rec he will take a help of translator, but that's all fine. Thank you. Good morning and namaste. Uh, 
यो हमरो नेपाल बाटा कशेरी चाहिए मैं ट्रैफिक और सरूले नेपाली और लाई अमेरिका लाई कसन वन्नी छोट करी मैं बताऊँ चुत यस पची मेरो ये वड़ा लामू समय लगाये रख रहे को सात महीने लगाये रख रहे को ये वड़ा स्टोरी तो स्टोरी माँ कशेरी भाई वन्नी रचे माँ सुनाऊँ निसी हाँ एक्चुअली माँ सब इ लाइजेंस एंड ट्रैफिक और सॉल्वेंट नेपाल लाइ वनेरा समझे पना त्यो दानकरी गरम चुत त्यस पची ये वड़ा लामे स्टोरी जस्ला मेले सात महीना लगाये रे गरे त्यो स्टोरी जे कशरी गरियो मनेरा त्यस को ये वड़ा टूल्स एंड टेक्निक्स के के मेले अपनाये त्यो बारे माचे मो बताऊंगी चुत माय माय प्रेजेंटेशन विल बिगिन � and uh, in the in the uh, in the process being trafficked uh, um, by human trafficking network and then gradually i'll get into techniques of how uh, i i came up to report uh, this whole thing suruma unior le kathmandu bata america samma chai lai janda heri human traffickers haru le बारह तेरो वाला देश हो रहा हूँ उधर अमेरिका पूरे उन्हें करके रहेंगे। शुरू में काठमांडू वाला, दुबई, कतार हूँ उधर, कतार वाला ब्राज़ील, ब्राज़ील वाला बोलिविया, बोलिविया तो फेरू, फेरू वाला इक्वेडर, इक्वेडर का कोलंबिया, पानामा, तो स्पेस कोस्टा रिका, निकारगुआ, हनुरस, ग्वाटेमाल एक महीना दही एक वर्षा समो लाग नहीं रहेजे ये वड़ा मान चला जाए उन ट्रैफिकर सरूले अमेरिका पूरे उन्हें को लागे। So as you can see in the map, the traffickers take Nepalis from Kathmandu through thirteen countries and and it could take you know months and you know even up to a year before they are finally you know trafficked into America. इसलिए लाइज़ ना हैरी पा पर पर्सन ट्रैफिक सर्च लेचे फाइव मिलियन रुपीस ये उटा व्यक्ति बाटा चाहिए उन्हें ले लीने का रहेगा। सो इट कूट कॉस्ट पीपल अप तू फाइव मिलियन रुपीस इंडिविजुअल पेइंग ऑल द वे एस दे गो थ्रू फ्रॉम कंट्री टू कंट्री बाय द टाइम दे रीच द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स इसे जानकारी उन्हें ले नेपाल बाटा बोलिए भैया सम्मा सही ये रूट यूज करते तेज पची बोलिविया बाटे यूएसए सम्मा सही लैंड रूट बस ट्रॉक भैन बोट उन्हें ले यूज करे रहते सेरी जाएं यूएस पूरे उन्हें करे कराएं सो फ्रॉम कटमांडू अप तू बोलिविया दे आर फ्लोन बाय एयर and from there, uh, the, the traffickers use different means. You know, uh, they make them walk through the jungle, and then they uh, take, uh, drive them in uh, lorries. You know, um, cram them in in trucks, and then uh, you know, drive them through nights uh, in, into across the borders until they reach the United States. So, <laughs> पहला का काठमांडु बाटा कतार सीधे लाए जाने थे वने पची उन्हें ले काठमांडु बाटा थाईलैंड इंडिया थाईलैंड कंबोडिया वियतनाम दुबई उन्हें आप यूएस लाए जाने थे लेते इस पर सारे आफ्टर आई फर्स्ट एक्सपोज दिस रूट ऑफ ह्यूमन ट्रैफिकिंग ऑफ नेपालीज the traffickers uh, stopped using the route that they were originally using. Earlier they were uh, taking um, Nepalis from uh, first Nepal to Qatar and from there on. But uh, later on they changed that to from uh, Nepal through India via Cambodia. So they were uh, constantly changing the routes. Uh, Human trafficking history or जेको सीरीज़ है मैं भाई बने रहा हूँ पता उनका ही रहेगा चु। I am going to get into the techniques of how these trafficking networks actually operate। शुरू में ये वाला नचिने को मान चले, पाँच छह महीना जेसे regular उसले मेल आया गई रास्ते हो, उसले इतनी मात्रा बंद है कि यहाँ बाटा जेसे अमेरिका लाइज़ जाने इन्हें क्या मान चाहिए और ब्राज़ील में अल्पतर पर ऐसा 
के रही है तो एकचोटी बुझू वाले मैं उसको नंबर मागे उस ब्राजिल में फोन करें कुरा करें so um the first uh, step to my investigation was i got to know from this individual from brazil uh, that uh, you know nepalis were uh, being trafficked through, through that route and uh, nepalis were in a you know traveling in a very dangerous condition um, uh, being trafficked into the united states so i i got his number and then i contacted him and that's that's how i i got to know um, i got my initial information ऊ नेपाली नहीं थे ऊपर पैला तेरी नई छ सात वर्ष पैला अमेरिका जाना ह्यूमेन ट्राफिक लगे रहे तैं गए अलपत्र पड़े छोड़े रही सेटल भैस छ सात महीना coincidentally uh, this individual that i was talking to a nepali was himself a victim of trafficking uh, who was on on his way to the united states but uh, you know uh, settled down in brazil uh, that was uh, 14 15 years back तेस पीछे मैं उसंग को को अलपत्र पड़ा चाहिए अलपत्र पड़े नेपाली को मोबाइल मतलब कंटैक्ट कराइद बोले ते ब्राजिल में मात्र है उसके चिली बोलिविया में रहकर नेपाली को मैं नंबर उपलब्ध कराई दिए ते पी मैं तैं रह अलपत्र पड़े बसिपाली कुरा सुरू कर सो थ्रू दिस पर्सन आई आई रिक्वेस्टेड हिम टू प्रोवाइड मी नंबर एंड कंटैक्ट अफ अदर सीमिलरली ट्रैक ट्राफिक नेपालीज हु आर लैंग्वेजिंग इन वेरियस साउथ अमेरिकन कंट्रीज इंक्लूडिंग बोलिविया चिले ब्राजिल मैं सबस नाम लिस्ट मग्दे तीनटा बोलिविया चिली ब्राजिल में पांच सौ भाग बड़ी नेपाली ते अलपत्र रहोक अवस्था में थे एंड थ्रू थ्रू वेरियस कंटैक्ट्स आई केम टू नो दैट देर वेर एटलिस्ट फाइव हंड्रेड पीपल लैंग्वेजिंग इन दीज साउथ अमेरिकन कंट्रीज मैं कई मानी को पासपोर्ट को फोटोकपी कर मैं पठाईदी भर को एक्जिट भिशा भिशा छि छे के एयर टिकट हु मगाए then um i requested uh, some of them to send their uh, you know copy of their passport their visa and um, and they they sent the, those documents uni haru bina visa brazil pugeka thie uni haru sanga visa thiena matra air ticket thiyo uni haru bina visa nai brazil pugeka rai chan tespachi maile immigration ma hamro immigration ma gaera so then yo kasari sambhav cha bina visa manche kasari chai me ब्राजिल पुग्न सकता इस बिना भिषाई हमी उन्न दिशा भादा खेल इस दिन मिलते हैं रही मैं उन्नी पासपोर्ट में लगाकर एक्जिट हम त्रिभुवन विमानस्थल में लगाकर एक्जिट स्टिकर देखाएं ये नक्कली होने अत्यागमन ने so uh, when i had the copies of those passports i went to the uh, immigration office and i and i inquired from them you know how is it possible for a uh, nepali to uh, reach the south american country without even having visa stamped in their passports and there there was uh, evidence of their uh, you know air tickets so the immigration officials denied that uh, these uh, s- uh, stamp of immigration stamp uh, of their exit visa uh, were were fake so तेस पीछे मैं उन्नीर जो दिन उन्नी को एक्जिट भिश स्टिकर लगा छाप लगा थे तो दिन को कतार एयरवेज को टिकट थी मैं तो दिन को फ्लाइट को लिस्ट मागे को को उड़े थे तैंने मांगे उन्नीर ने बल्ल बल्ल तो सूची तो दिए तर जो मसंग पासवर्ड आईपुगे थी तो उन्नीर को नाम तैं थे उन्न सूची में थे Uh, so uh, when i got the flight details uh, from which uh, these individuals had uh, left for qatar um, you know i searched for the name of these individuals uh, i could not find the name of these individuals in the in the flight list this pachi मैं कतार एयरवेज में गए अध्यागमन बट प्राप्त न भाई पी कतार एयरवेज में गए तो दिन को फ्लाइट डिटेल्स मगे को को बोर्डिंग पास लाइन चढ़े भाई उन्नी सूची दिए अध्यागमन को सूची र कतार एयरवेज को सूची जुदाऊ धीरे सत्ताईस जान जान मं अध्यागमन को सूची में थे जो उड़े थे तो दिन एयरलाइंस को सूची उसमें थे so when i compared the list of the uh, immigration department of the people that had uh, left the country uh, in that particular flight and i compared it to the qatar airways list uh, of people who had boarded the flight there was discrepancy there at least 27 people uh, names of 27 people were missing from the list of the immigration department so clearly the uh, people had taken the flight but they were not in the list of the immigration department tes pachi airport ma setting hune gareko chai khuleo तीन बेला ब्राजिल पांच जान फर्क आए जो अमेरिका जाना वाले हिड़का थे अभी उन्नी कसरी एयरपोर्ट में सेटिंग होने उनके बताए उन्नी कसरी ब्राजिलसम पुगे 
So this is when I came to find out about the nexus uh, between the human traffickers and people in the immigration department at the airport. Um, in the meantime, five people who were uh, trapped in Brazil made it uh, back, uh, back to Nepal, and they confirmed how uh, the nexus actually operated. This was a tegamal let's hand me in Surugaru. K. Panzana, Apna Karmacha, like our wife, and Gorit, or Zani Kromche, Roki Gothena, Nepali Ru, Goira Haikati, this was in Mera Samparka Machim, Exana, Bektis Janigore, Jana Laikose. So the immigration department uh, initiated investigation after uh, this report was published, and uh, five officials were also, uh, you know, um, uh, charged, and they, they were, uh, you know, prosecuted by according to the uh, department's laws. Uh, the department took action against them, but uh, the trafficking network still uh, continued. And I uh, met a person uh, who, who who was about to leave. Uh, uh, via the same route. Uh, when I request that, I will accept the request. I will accept the request. I will accept the request. I will accept So, uh, when I came to, uh, into contact of this person who was uh, willingly uh, being trafficked uh, uh, through these countries, I, I uh, requested him and, and he agreed to keep me updated about uh, you know, how he was being trafficked from which country before he enters the United States. मैले यति बेला सब ब्राजिल सम्म पुगेकाको मात्र स्टोरी गरे थे अमेरिका सम्म पुग्छन् कि पुग्दैनन् भन्ने पनि मलाई थाहा भइसकेको थिएन त्यति बेला सम्म यसरी अमेरिका लै जान्दै हामी जान्दै गरेको हो तर हामी ब्राजिलबाट उता जान सकेनौ र यहाँ अल्पत्र भन्ने मात्र उनीहरुले भन्दै आएका थिए पीडितहरुले सो अन्टिल नाउ आई न्यू दैट पीपल वेयर बीइंग ट्रैप्ड इन वेरियस साउथ अमेरिकन कंट्रीज इन देयर यू नो प्रोसेस अफ बीइंग ट्रैफिकड इनटू द युनाइटेड स्टेट्स आई वाज नॉट एक्चुअली श्योर वेदर मेनी पीपल हैड सक्सीडेड रीचिंग द युनाइटेड स्टेट्स त्यसपछि 7 महिनामा उनी अमेरिकामा पुगे यहाँ काठमाडौँबाट छोडेको 7 महिनामा उनी अमेरिका छिरे यो बीचमा हाम्रो चार पाँच पटक कुरा भयो उनीहरुलाई चाहिँ बीच बीचमा पैसा माग्ने बेलामा मात्रै उनीहरुलाई चाहिँ इन्टरनेट एक्सेस मोबाइल दिन्दो रहेछ त्यति बेला फेसबुकमा अनि मेलमा स्काइपमा हाम्रो कुराकानी हुन्थ्यो र एकदम छोटो धेरै समय दिने हुन्थ्यो र छोटो कुरा गर्दै डिटेल के के भयो भनेर त्यति बेला सुन्न राम्रोसँग बताउन समयले पुग्दै हुन्थ्यो अनि अमेरिका सात महिनापछि पुगेपछि मात्र उनीसँग चाहिँ अनि डिटेलमा कुरा गर्न पाएँ मैले after seven months, uh, this person finally reached the United States, and between that, uh, uh, in between those months, uh, uh, we talked few uh, few times. It was a very brief conversation, but I got to know uh, where he was and what he was doing. Um, actually, they were not allowed to, uh, you know, contact uh, uh, their family or friends other than when they were allowed to call to, uh, to demand uh, family to send money so that uh, they could continue their journey. यो बीचमा मैले रिसर्च अनलाइन के के भेटिन्छ अब केही त होला त्यो ल्याटिन अमेरिकी कन्ट्रीहरुमा त जाँदै गरेका नेपालीको विषयमा केही त इन्टरनेटमा भेटिन्छ होला यसरी धेरै पहिला देखि यो चलिरहेको रहेछ भन्ने थाहा पाएपछि मैले चाहिँ सम्बन्धित ल्याटिन अमेरिकी कन्ट्रीहरुमा रुटमा जुन जुन पर्छ तिनीहरुको अध्यागमनको वेबसाइटहरु चाहिँ मैले चाहिँ पढ्न थाले हेर्न थाले त्यो सम्बन्धकार भनेको ल्याङ्ग्वेज ल्याङ्ग्वेज मिल्दैन थियो and uh, to investigate further, I started uh, studying the website and, and uh, studying as much as I could about the immigration departments of uh, the countries uh, in transit. Uh, but the problem was the language. I could not uh, you know, properly understand uh, the information because there was a language barrier there. Google Translate. Google Translate में गए रचाएं तो language आ रहे English में translate करे पची अन्य जैसे Nepali संगत सही शब्द और मिलने जाती चाहिए मलित से translate करे रह पढ़ना थाले अन्य content और वो बैठने थाले Nepali और उसे बरसों दही त्याग से पकड़ा ऊपर निकारे का राइजन त्यो कुरा आ रहे चाहिए बल्ल था पाए कि बीच बाटो में नहीं धेरे Nepali और पकड़ा ऊपर निकारे 
So uh, when I started uh, looking for keywords and translate it to Google Translate using uh, any keywords like Nepali, then I got to know that uh, this uh, news had been all over these uh, country uh, websites in these countries and this was actually happening for a long time. And the country has an online news portal that has been in the United States. The United States has been in Nepal for a long time. The United States has been in the United States. Then I, I got the information about uh, news, news information about how many people were uh, caught and how many people were rescued from the traffickers' uh, uh, net. Uh, so as I as I uh, kept searching, I got more and more information about uh, these trapped people in various countries. Malay Tespaji, Bolivia go immigration lies in Patak Patak Mill, Patai Pasi, only Terepasi and reply Gari. Two thousand two will go do me in a good bisma, Pansi Nepali, let the honorable visa legalization. So um, I, I contacted Bolivia's immigration department uh, again and again, and finally they confirmed and, uh, and uh, shared some information with me about. Uh, which year was that? Uh, which, which year? 2012. Okay, so 2012, uh, 500 people, uh, the department confirmed 500 people had arrived in Bolivia. This was the American immigration company report. I was told that the US Department of Homeland Security was in the report. I was told that the report was in the report. त्यां सही नेपाली औरों को विषय में ते सही डाटा आरु थोपरो फैला पा रहे हैं मेले अंतिम स्पष्टी पॉल्लो कंफर्म हुआ कि ये नेपाली औरों ते ते देरे पॉइला देखी सही ऐसे री ट्रैफिकर्स वाले सही ते लाने गरे को रही जब अनेक रोते अब डाटा बाटा सही बल्ला पुष्टि हुआ and further, I started studying the immigration department's website and, and uh, Homeland Security Department's website about uh, uh, trafficked Nepalis in the United States, and I got more and more information and data. अनि नेपाली अमेरिका यू मेक्सिको यूएस बॉर्डर में तेजसेरी लॉय का आरोच छेद है री बॉर्डर में जाएं मतलब 2004 दही को डटा जाएं फैला पा रहे हैं जो 2013 में 896 नेपाली आरोच जाएं त्यां पकड़ा ऊपर एक आरोच so uh, this is the data of uh, Nepalis arrested in Mexico USA border from between 2004 and 2013. So as you can see, more and more uh, people uh, were uh, arrested at the border. अन्य तेरे होमलैंड सेक्युरिटी के ऑफसाइड में इलीगल रूप में आते हैं छिरने मेक्सिको बॉर्डर वाले छिरने छिरी सके बच्चे पकड़ा ऊपर नहीं और उसको चाहे 2013 2014 से मचाएं को डाटा पनी तेरे में ले फला पाने रिपोर्ट और वो है वैर देख रही हैं। So as you can see, among the arrested, most of them were arrested by the U.S. Border तेज पर ऐसे रे झिरने नेपाली हरू ले जाएं ट्रैफिक और हरू ले जून रूट यो प्रयोग करे जाएं अमेरिका पर आऊं चल उन्हें लेते हैं झिरने बित के रिफ्यूजी आप लोग जो स्टार्टर्स मांग नहीं रहे जाएं तेज पर ऐसी तेजता व्यक्ति और ला कोई कोई जाएं अमेरिका ले जाएं केरी ला जाएं रिफ्यूजी को स्टार्टर्स so the first thing these uh, trafficked uh, people, uh, when they land into the United States, they do is uh, they um, uh, demand a, a refugee status. They, they request for a refugee status. And uh, the U.S. Homeland Security Department's uh, website confirms that uh, till date there are 6,095 uh, Nepali refugees in the United States. This is my question. तेज पर चीप मतलब और देश को अपसाइड हो रुपनी है रे थोपरे नेपाली हरू जैसे कोस्टारिका में 2014 में मतलब दूसरे 50 जना 250 जना नेपाली हरू पकड़ा ऊपर एक राजन पानामा में 65 जना जितने तो देश बीच में थोपरे नेपाली हरू पकड़ा ऊपर ने अन्य छोटे ने फेरी जैसे तीने ट्रैफिकर्स और लेजे उन्हें वाला जैसे ले रहा था अंदर and and the way it it worked was they were arrested and then again released and then uh, the uh, traffickers again you know uh, took them on on way yoda yo te thuprai eseri chai thuprai desh ka chai janda heri chai maile euta yo report pani phela pare no more death ko tes ma 2000 dekhi 2014 samma tyo route ma 2649 chai dead body haru chai 
फैला पारे रहे जो चाहे पहचान होना ना सही का आरुथी है जो अमेरिका इन्हें आरुको थियो सो एस आई केप सर्चिंग आई केम टू फाउंड आई केम टू फाइंड दैट ट्रूथ बिटवीन 2000 टू 2014 एट लीस्ट 2649 अन आईडेंटिफाइड डेड बॉडीज वेर फाउंड इन द ब्राज़ीलियन मेक्सिको रूट एंड एट लीस in 2014 were confirmed to be nepali mm-hmm. whose dead body was was found in colombia and in panama ah eseri jai jane garuko chai scan garda heri eseri jai maile yo tyaha ko latin american country haru ko news portal haru bata liyeko photo haru ho eseri chai scan garera chai unihar le chai yo patta laundo rai chai ki kaseri chai lagi ra cha traffickers haru le bhanera scan garera ga so this is a picture of a scanner machine which shows uh, people uh, inside a container in a cargo truck ah yo ni pakrau pareka nepali haru ko chai tasveer haru ho tin latin american country haru ma these are the pictures of uh, uh, trafficked people who were arrested at the border is it so some more pictures of people who were arrested इसी सात महीना पीछे मैं उसको स्टोरी मैं चार हजार वोट को एट स्टोरी करें डलर पच्चीस सात महीना में अमेरिका सो आफ्टर सेवेन मंथ्स अफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन आई फाइनली पब्लिश माई रिपोर्ट वेर आई ट्रेस द जर्नी अफ दिस वन पर्सन हू हज ट्राफिक अल द वे फ्रम नेपाल इन टू द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स थ्रू वेरियस लैटिन अमेरिकन कंट्रीज एंड इट वॉज पब्लिश यू नो देर वॉज इट वॉज अ फोर फोर थाउजेंड वर्ड रिपोर्ट तेस पीछे सरकार ने कई रूल बना इंडिया उन्नी नो अब्जेक्शन लेटर अनिवार्य चाहिए नेपाली भाई चेंज गए सो आफ्टर द स्टोरी वॉज पब्लिश द बिगेस्ट इंपैक्ट वॉज द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट बिकज द नेपालीज वेर बिंग ट्राफिक्ड वाय इंडिया इंडियन गवर्नमेंट मेड इट मैंडेटरी फर नेपालीज फ्लाइंग थ्रू इंडिया टू अबटेन अ नो अब्जेक्शन लेटर फ्रम देयर गवर्नमेंट सरकार ने निम बनाए पर यह जाने क्रम चाहे रोक गई रहें अं गई रहें हमें बारम्बार ये न्यूज कर रूप में तर जाने क्रम चाहे रोक थिंग्स हेव चेंज अट बट द ट्राफिकिंग नेटवर्क स्टिल कंटिन्ूस एंड सो डज माई रिपोर्टिंग मैं ये स्टोरी कर अनुभव कर एक्ल स्टोरी करें तो अनलाइन मार्फत रिसर्च मार्फत रेट न भैदे भे ये स्टोरी संभव थे रि लैटिन अमेरिकी कंट्री में कोई को जर्नलिस्टर संग हमें सहकार कर सकने तो अवस्था होने होने यो स्टोरी अज बड़ी एक्सपोज कर सकते यो ह्यूमन ट्राफिकिंग को स्टोरी आई वॉन्ट टू रैपअप बाई सेंग दैट आई डेट द स्टोरी ओन्ली थ्रू अनलाइन रिसर्च एंड एंड फ्यू फोन कल्स दैट अफ द कंटैक्ट दैट आई हेड मेड um the internet was of uh, great great help uh, and so were the you know um uh, some of the tools available there but had we uh, got a good collaboration with the uh, journalist there uh, we could have had a even bigger collaborative uh, uh, you know investigative reporting um अलग अभी इसी गई रखे अभी निके जोखिम उठाया दुर्घटना जुन दिन होना सूल दुर्घटना तर हमी को गवर्नमेंट को तैयारी चाहे तो रोक्ने कुरा में नहीं सफल भैया देखिंदन रहा कुछ अप्ठारो कु दिन ठूल आपद विपद आईलागो उद्धार कसरी करने भाई तीन हम तैयारी अवस्था में छन The worst thing about uh, what I found in this investigation is uh, when these people are trapped in these countries, they are completely on their own, and they are so vulnerable. And there is nothing the government can do to help or rescue them because they are in the hand of the criminal traffickers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was really wonderful. Now uh, we got twenty minutes for the question and answer. You want to make a point? Okay, <laughs> very good. So, guys, okay, we'll start with. We got twenty minutes of question and answer. You all are like free to raise questions. Raise your hand, introduce yourself, ask who you want to answer the question. Yeah, we start. Surendra, I'm curious. In Mexico, they have every state has a jail for immigrant illegal immigrants, and they hold them there for six weeks, and then they release them, and then the traffickers come and get them and take them to the next one. 
next state. Then they get arrested, potentially and held for six weeks, and then released all through Latin America. Is that what they were finding, that they would get taken in and jailed and then released again? Mexico. Mexico ma, you know, mere mere chay me Guatemala ra Costa Rica. Mate, ye kavta aaj raht rahi chay one week. Ra one week pasi chay ek maina bitra chay yus desko si mana chay kati shagnu mane. Raja unhe alag chhodni daray chay. Tya chhodni bitte ke unhe aur life heri traffic ko saru samatna pugi shakchan. Tya pasi heri unhe aur ko America tarf ko yatra shuru hunch. So I'm not sure about the Mexico, but I did find out. I did, I did find out that uh, in Guatemala they are uh, held for at least a week. Uh, in, in Costa Rica they are held up for a week. And after that uh, the traffickers get hold of them again and their journey continues. I, I was keen to know because it's really a phenomenal work. You got a question? Okay. I will just come to you. Uh, it's a phenomenal work. And I think it's really great to also the journalists come on dice and share the secrets, how they do, how they follow the trial, how they do the documentation collection. A lot of journalists actually are not really keen to do that. Uh, I, I was keen to know what was the, from Martha, what was the, what was the really key challenge when you first started digging the story? Um, to be honest, the, the two things that were really a big challenge were to find people who are currently imprisoned, and so getting to Benjina, and then, I mean, they got there, and they, they, it took them, we easily could have left that island without finding those men, and without even understanding what was happening. It was critical that Esther got there, because Robin, it was, it was hiding in plain sight, and it often is. And then the second really, we really sweated it to connect those dots back to the United States through those customs records. I, I breezed over it, but it was weeks and weeks of kind of a, almost around the clock tracking, and if anybody wants to sit down with me later, I can show you the websites we used to do that, but it was looking at hundreds and hundreds of different companies and figuring out what brand they might make. Actually, we had to go to supermarkets in the United States a lot to look at the seafood. You want to add to that? What was the most difficult part of your investigation when you started digging? So, when the garo ba, when you go say, I mean, all the permanent juta unna niyo. Kina bane na imi, I mean, like say, immigration ni pani dhatne. Rab arko bane language. I mean, like June Latin American country haru ko ma say journalist thay ko journalist sorsa kam se kam I mean, swa kara garna. सकने हो वन्दे इनफॉरमेशन बॉडी था उन्हें तो तरह नौ दे हरी अत्यं त्यां को पाठ होते हैं आई मी पूरे अंदर कार्म जस्तो उन्हें रह जाते लैंग्वेज पर न मिलने रा और उब मानसिक संपर्क पानी गर्म न सकेंगे I ran against the wall on two occasions. First, while trying to source information at our own immigration department because they were clearly lying to us. So that was a challenge uh, to to uh, to prove that uh, you know their their document wa was a, was a lie, and and second challenge was uh, uh, getting information from uh, these uh, victims in these uh, countries because uh, the language barrier was there and and uh, sourcing information from the uh, internet alone uh, where the you know websites were in in the local language was very difficult. So uh, we we knew nothing about these people once they had left Nepal. So trying to uh, get in contact with them uh, waiting for their phone call you know uh, and and uh, getting inform very little press just little information uh, within few minutes so th these were all challenges uh, uh, Zahra Nader from New York Times I work with New York Times in Kabul I have a question uh, from Isser um, during you cover the slavery story, did the company's owner, did the fish company's owner know that two reporters are interned in their compound? And did you face with security threat? Um, I want to know about this. Thank you. Yeah, for a couple of days uh, it was okay because uh, we were staying at the village uh, across across uh, the water from the 
company compound. So we went back and forth from the company and the village. But what we did was, uh, right after a day or two, when the official started noti noticing that there are two strangers, women, hanging around in their village, the police, th there's one police in the village would follow us around. So Robin actually had to go to, she was teaching at the village school, she was teaching English, so the police actually uh, kind of followed her while, uh, while she was going around, so I actually sneak out with the guys to the company. But of course uh, there were security who found uh, what we were doing there, like they kicked me out from the compound um, and one evening we remember that uh, we were filming uh, some of this uh, slaves were like unloading frozen fish to the, car uh, to the cargo ship loading the fish and we were actually shooting it from the water uh, from a small boat and they found us from the from their binocular, I guess. So they chased us. Um, they chased us in the water with their speedboat, but we luckily made it to the shore. So there were like intimidations and threats from the local authorities uh, because this island is too, just too far from the mainland Indonesia that people didn't even know that it existed. Uh, just a s very sm small island, so it's like kind of a lawless island. That's why there were threats. Uh, my question is to Masa. Uh, I think you find very good angle uh, you cut into like American uh, customers. So they like, notice that it's a, a slave product. So uh, I'm curious about in the beginning you get this angle or uh, how to convince your editorial desk spend so many resources on this story. I had done this um, before within the United States on a project where we looked at illegal child labor in the United States and we put 25 reporters in, in places, found vulnerable children who were working illegally and just stayed with the product. And we just went with the product to the factory or wherever it was and we didn't leave that place until we found out what brand it was. And that report had been very effective and changed child labor laws and um, really shifted the situation a lot of children and policies as well. So that had, we had proven that this could work, um, but um, we didn't. We we didn't always tell them <laughs> what we were doing when we were doing it. We just kind of did it, and a lot. So it wasn't incredibly costly. The most expensive pieces were the trips to Benjina, and that was a telephone conversation with editors where we said we believe that we have very good reason to believe that people are trapped on this island, and it's going to cost a fair bit to get a team there and. Um, an editor said, "If you really, if if we really think we know where people are enslaved, we have a moral obligation to go." So, hi, I'm Stephen Groves. I'm a freelancer here. Um, I was wondering how you originally found uh, Benjina um, and that people were enslaved there. Um, just briefly, by, by piecing together stories from dozens and dozens of escaped or rescued slaves or people who had formerly been at sea, piecing together their stories and seeing what the commonalities were, and that name kept coming up. Or, gosh, that sounds like they're talking about that same place, and so... Hi, I'm Gargi. I'm from Cobra Post, India. Uh, my question is to Esther and Marta, both, sort of. <laughs> so uh, the two different case studies that were presented here, I am very fascinated about the difference in their methodologies because when Sender ended his uh, uh, presentation, he said, you know, I only did this just using Internet as a tool. While we are listening to you, it's a fascinating story, and there are calls to NASA, there are calls to private companies who are providing you satellite stories. There are Capitol Hill hearings, which, you know, which uh, quickly you know, close that loophole that you are struggling with. So the 
impact of your stories are also you know it's it's uh, enabled by a lot of other organizations which exist outside the nexus that you're struggling against and uh, that's huge a call to nasa and they're ready to help you i mean it's uh, a, a call to a senator and they're they're ready to go for a hearing to close a loophole in a law so is is a story of the scope that you just presented to us is it possible to do that with less resources than you had what would you do if this was not this was like a third world really small company reporting and it was not associated press what advice do you have for journalists who are doing this every day two things first of all this afternoon we're having a networking session um to set up some perhaps it'll be as simple as a facebook group where people who are in one place and another can can do this throughout the united states there are now nonprofit centers for investigative reporting and the global investigative journalism network could introduce you to those people when he was telling his story i was like i was in mexico at a immigration center where they had all these nepali people and i was like what are you doing here and i can speak spanish and english but i don't speak nepali and even the mexicans thought they were like where is this country they're from you know the himalayas and, and it was like a terrible language barrier and they their assumption was that they wanted to be continuing their journey to the united states um and so i just shrugged if i had known if we had been on a facebook group and it had been like i've i've tracked these people to mexico i could have at least called them and this is what esther and within the ap we can do so conveniently like i'll just say i'm going to be in this place i think i'm going to run into some burmese people can you be on standby and so yeah usually that how we walk like uh, no matter where we are uh, now at the moment what we're doing is like we don't really need to worry about the budget of the story that you're doing just by asking one of your colleagues like walking together on a story by phone or internet uh, and that that works better yes thank you If you're interested in joining this fledgling network and I understand there's a similar network um from Africa as well with about 40 journalists involved so if, if we may be able to combine it all it would be very good to come to our session this afternoon just to get on board or if you can't make it um just be in touch with us so we can add you to it I, I just want to add there's a, there's a dedicated group in India about 40 journalists who only cover human trafficking and they have set up a group on whatsapp with the help of writers and that's really do remarkably well one last question from here and then we're ending thanks i'm shari from taiwan uh first thanks you uh, thank you to excellent team and uh, i have a question for martha sorry because for journalists we always facing the deadline and uh, in your story there are two important parts one is the human rights and another is the relevancy to the uh, customers so when did you uh, make up your mind that you have to go through the whole process and not only stop in the trafficking uh, slavery this part um i mean even in, in the the trafficking story it's a excellent story why uh, did you just uh, stop there or oh, and you still uh, go on the the supermarket side the audience side what make you uh, to do this decision the main reason is because it had been very effective in the past so there's like Paul Newman salsa or Heinz ketchup or Taco Bell salsa if i could name those names and say children here's a photo of a child picking the chili that ends up in that they ha- they're the ones who have the power right they have the money and so it, when when walmart itself says we are not going to get fish from this that starts to actually force change um prior to that it's so frustrating you do these hum- and and we had done them ourselves these human rights stories here's a poor person nobody in the united states cares honestly particularly but if they're in walmart and they're like oh wait this is from indonesia and ah you, that starts to have a real impact so just to conclude everything you know the human trafficking story is a story which is happening actually in the middle of us like we saw people on the, like lunar on red lights on every asian stay like i was in afghanistan i never thought 
there will be a woman trafficking from Afghanistan. And it was so surprising for someone who covered Afghanistan for 15 years. But it was so shocking because it was happening right in the middle of Afghanistan. And women have been trafficked to India, which was really impossible. I just want to thank this wonderful panel. It was really great. Uh, the great session and I think you really got a sense of how really the complex stories can be investigated. Martha, Esther and Surendra, thank you so much. They're all here. You, you, can, you can share the cards. You can sit. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to come and just join. Thanks.